Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, distinguished delegates. Uh, we are both representatives of Earth, uh, the students for the exploration development of space. But today we are here speaking on behalf of Space Generation. And more importantly, the cause that this organization actually stands for. Um, as you can imagine, we became pretty happy and excited when we learned that we could address you today. And of course, we thought about what input normal students like us could give to you today. So we looked at the topic, Space and Society. And as uh, soon as we found this out, the uh, question disappeared rapidly. We are here today because we students are a part of this society, a vital part. This is will be our generation that will shape the space development. And this development will happen in a peaceful way of cooperation. Or in the course of a rivalry. We are here today because the people involved in this project that we will present to you today, they are a positive example of what a peaceful cooperation could look like. Um, SETSA 2 is a global student initiative comprised of eight teams from all over the world. We are very proud to work on this project with members of almost all continents who communicate with each other through the means of modern communication, online channels using the internet for video conferences, design and planning meetings. The work is basically divided between eight teams. Those eight teams represent the usual subsystems of the satellite, for instance, structures, communications, command and data handling. The satellite itself will be means to the end of enabling 50 students around the world to start their career in space. Working on SETSA 2 as a member makes everyone in this team gain an enormous amount of experience. The internationality and global teamwork in the project teaches the members to adopt a global attitude. Basically speaking, our satellite meets all the international CubeSat standards, meaning the dimensions will not exceed 10 centimeters in length and height with a weight of less than 1,000 grams. SETSA 2 will orbit the Earth in a planned height of 350 to 700 kilometers depending on the mission. We expect it will travel at a speed of 27,000 kilometers per hour. This means the satellite circles Earth in approximately 100 minutes. But what's the purpose of sending yet another CUBE satellite into space? Uh, what's the purpose of starting yet another student initiative? And looking at the big picture, what's the purpose of spending so much time and effort on space projects? And we can tell you, we, from our own experience, we've asked this question a lot of times before. So we started thinking about it ourselves. Um, we think to start with our topic today, bridging the gap. We have to understand space today. Um, and I think it is interesting to look at what space meant yesterday. About 30 years ago, space used to be a buzzword in society. Basically, every kid thought about becoming an astronaut. But where does space stand today? Space seems far away. Space is nothing graspable but an abstract phenomenon out there in which investing seems a waste of money and time, almost unrealistic, futuristic. What we found is that there seems to be a wide gap between space and society. On the one hand, you've got huge rockets, large amounts of money, incredibly difficult technology. On the other hand, you have normal people who only get in touch with space in the movies to be truthful. The truth is, uh, space is right in the middle of our lives. Everybody uses mobile phones, uses the internet, uses GPS for the navigation of airplanes, cars. So space is not far away, but this message needs to be brought across. Why, you can ask. However, we believe that a major part of future technology development will stem from space-related projects and science. Many innovations will come from this field, no doubt. But in order for this to happen, we need young, motivated students to commit themselves to this work. But at the moment, frankly, the majority of these motivated potential students seems discouraged to enter this field. Uh, let, me, let me give you an example. Um, just the other day I met a student from the Technical University in Vienna and he was, he was really in, uh, into space. He was informed, he was really good at his courses. So I asked him, why are you not going into it? You know, studying, studying that was related to space work so he could later on work in this field. And his answer was quite predictable. He believed it was unrealistic to be able to enter the field and didn't see where to start with it. 
If the perception of space would have been a more realistic one, his answer might have been different. For an Austrian student, space career is unrealistic, not possible, and that is a problem. Because Peter is not the only one, but one of many potential people out there who do not choose this path because they do not see where, th where to start, they do not see this path going anywhere. And this, as we see, is a waste of potential, because the sector loses a lot of professional, motivated young people, young graduates, because of this gap and this distorted perception. If a technical student or a student from a different academic background is convinced that he or she does have a possibility to develop in this sector, to go into this field, it will be difficult for space development to progress through the ideas and innovation of the next generation. Space development needs to progress, but for this to happen we need potential, young minds, ideas, intelligent people that bring in new ideas to this field. And this is exactly the point where this distorted perception of space in society and the gap we talked about gets problematic. Uh, let, you, let me give you an example. It sounds almost unbelievable, but looking at surveys of space generation on this topic, we found out that about 80% of the European citizen have not heard about an organization called ESA. So, mm. so if we manage to close this gap, if we manage to move space into a more realistic position and make people aware that space is part of our everyday lives, if we do this, students like Peter will be able to follow their interests and their motivation will lead them initially into the direction of space field work.